Okay, here we go. It took us 10 tries to record, but we'll record now. So I'm going to find the RMS value for this function. <coughs> so what is F RMS? And the definition for that is the square root of 1 over the period, the integral over a full period. You can go from 0 to t or just t0, any 0. f of t squared. That's the definition of RMS value for any function. You take that function, square it, integrate over a full period, and when you get your answer, divide it by the period. Now, I need to know what the expression for these. Now, notice this is a straight line. So the function, the equation for that is mx plus b, or in this case, m, we're using t. mt, because that's t here. mt plus b. So this has a negative slope. The slope is what? This is 0.05, right? So the rise over the run, what's the rise? Or the fall, it's negative one, and the run is what? 0.05, what's negative one over 0.05? 20. Negative 20, right? So the equation for this, negative 20t, and what's your y-intercept here? Zero. Now for this one, the one that's rising, let me extend it. You can see if you extend it, it's going to go like this. Your y-intercept is not going to be a zero for that one. Every time you go down, you're going to drop by one unit. So that's a zero. That's a negative one. That's a negative two. This should be a negative three here at that rate. So the slope for this, that's going to be what? 20t minus three. That's the equation for it. In my period where the function starts to repeat, it looks like to me, this is when it starts to repeat right here. Can you see it? From there to there, that's your period. So we started from here, then start to repeat again right here. So my RMS value is going to be 1 over 0.3. The integral from 0 to 0.3. Oh, yeah, milli. Can I forget about the milli? From 0 to 0.3 milli. Oh, wait a minute, that's milli, right? I forgot the milli, so we divide by 0 0.05 milli. This is not negative 20 now. I forgot that's a milli. See that milli? So where's my calculator? What's 1 over 0 0.05 milli? I already forgot that's a milli. Uh, negative 1 divided by 0 0.05 EE. Where's my EE here? E left where? Oh, no. Up, oh, yeah. Negative 3. I forgot that milli. So that's negative what? Is that 20 or 200,000? Should be 20. 20,000. 20, yep. Is that negative 20,000? Because it's the milli there. I always hated those millis and micros. Negative, we say what, 20,000? And this will be what? 20,000 right here. Twenty thousand. T minus three. So F of T squared DT. And now I need to break F of T down. So this will be we need dividing by a milli, that's really a thousand on the top, a thousand over point three. The integral from zero to 0 0.05 milli, I'll put milli here, just a reminder. And what's this function? Negative, we said 20,000, right? Not 2,000. I don't know if I wrote two here, that's 20,000. DT plus 
the integral from where? Point one, this is point what? One five. So from point one five to point two, both are millis. And the function is what? 20,000 t minus three dt. Now let me look back at the function just to make sure the y value is not millis or micros. Does it say anything on them? The picture doesn't show millis or micros here, right? <coughs> I don't see anything on this line. There is no millis. So that's a negative one, that's a plus one, but it's not in millis. That's in millis right here. I can see the milli. So now we're going to integrate that, plug in the limits. Square them first, right? Yep, I got to square them. And those numbers are going to be massive now. Well, you multiply this is a big number in the front. You divide them by 0 0.3 now. From 0 to 0 0.05 milli. So when you square that one, 20,000 squared, what's that, 400 million? Million. Because that's 1,000, right? So 400 million, oh boy, t squared. Good luck squaring that one. That's the FOIL method. Plus the integral from 0.15 milli to 0.2 milli. 20,000 squared. They use the FOIL method. That's 400 million. T squared minus, what's that, uh, 60,000 plus 60 more minus 120,000 T, I think plus 9, the FOIL method. Do you, you're missing the zero for the 400 million. 400 million. Yep, 400 million. Eight AM doing big numbers, small numbers, not nice of them. Go down a little bit. Yeah, you're you moving uh point oh five milli, so that'll be that'll go down a lot. Which one? Here? Yeah. Once you put these numbers in. So now let's integrate this. The first piece is gonna be what? This is four hundred million T cubed divided by three. As t goes from zero to zero point oh five milli, plus integrate that one. That would be four hundred million t cube over three minus. When you divide it by two, is that sixty thousand or sixty? Yeah, sixty thousand. T squared plus 9T as T goes from where to where? From 0.15 to 0.2 milli. And now let me pull my calculator out and see what these numbers are. Can't do that in your head? Huh? Can't do that in your head? Oh, sure. Uh, okay, 400 million, one, two, three, one, two, three, times 0 0.05 EE -E to the negative three, the whole thing raised to the power of three. Double check with your calculator, because as I said before, nobody's worse than me with calculators. Divided by three. I came up for an answer for this of 0 0.000. 0, 1, 7. Same thing. Okay, let's try the other one. 
Oh God, help us all. 400 million times 0.2 EE to negative 3 to the power 3. Good. Divided by 3. Good. Minus, we said 60,000 times 0.2 EE to the negative 3 squared plus 9 times 0.2e to the negative 3. The upper limit I got for this, the upper limit when you plug in the 0.2, I came up with 0 0.000467. Now I gotta subtract from it the lower limit. When it's 0.15 milli, 400 million times 0.15 EE to the negative 3 cubed divided by 3 minus 60,000 times 0.15 EE to the negative 3 squared plus 9 times 0.15 EE oh I hit EE twice E to the what? negative 3 And I came up with 0 0.00045. Can verify these numbers. So let's add them 0 0.00017 plus 0 0.000467 minus 0 0.00045 equals times 1000 divided by 0.3 I came up with the square root of 0.11333 take the square root of that and I came up with 0.33665 this is F RMS for that function if I pushed all the right buttons Anyone get that answer? I didn't, but I did the wrong. You did? I did the wrong number. For the, uh, I did negative 20 instead of negative 20,000, so I was off by like a power. Negative 20? Yeah, for the original function. So I, I had that. He didn't know. Oh, that. oh, the milli? Yeah. Yep. Got me. Yeah, the milli. I almost slipped at the beginning. I almost missed them. I didn't get the same answer for your second integral. Mm-hmm. You know what, that seems Todd? Actually. That's easy to tell you if you're right or wrong. Yeah, I think mine's wrong. There's a cal here, this calc that tells you actually, uh, F18, I'll show you. To integrate this piece, it's F3 for integration. See it, the second one is integration? Oh, yeah. Integral. And I like to put the parentheses here first, another set of parentheses, write the function, 400 million. You can use x, t, it doesn't matter. x squared. And you want to integrate that, close that comma, with respect to x, comma. Where's the comma? Where's the comma? There's a comma somewhere. Above nine. Above nine. Comma. x goes from zero, comma. So change that to milli. Move the decimal point three places, right? Point. Zero, 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 five. Close that. There's the answer. Point zero, 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 one, seven. So if we could do that from the beginning, why do we square it in the first place? Huh? Can we just put that, can we put the, before squaring it, put that whole equation in like that? This one? Yeah. You could just put the whole thing in one shot there. Instead of squaring it and doing all that? Yep, the calculator would have done it for you. Can it do indefinite? Yes, with respect to x. So if you want to do indefinite integral, so to go up there, that's why they don't let you use it in calculus. 
see if you go there, if you just delete these and just put comma with respect to X, see that? Hit enter, it gives you the answer. I use that for probability and stats for engineers, actually, when we get to double integral, I use that all the time. So if I want to integrate that one without having to do it by hand, I could have went even what um, Todd is telling me. Why, why even kill yourself with this? Just write that problem there. So I can do that. Watch this one, F3. And it does derivative two. It does double integral. Integrate. I like to put the function in parentheses. Here we go. My function is 20, 0, 0, 0. X or T, it doesn't matter. Minus 3 squared. Integrate that function, comma, with respect to x, comma, 0.15 EE negative 3, comma, 0.2 EE negative 3. Close parentheses. And there's the answer right here. If you subtract these two, and you have 0.000017. Go ahead. Yeah, EE is times 10 to the whatever. Negative the 3. Well, no, no, maybe like on the calculator, that's what that does. EE? Negative, yeah. On the, that's EE negative 3. Notice it shows you what the function See the limit 1.5, because now it changes that. Instead of 0.15 and 0.2, it puts in scientific notation. It goes from 0.15 to 0.2, 20,000 x minus 3 squared dx. Integrate that. And it's, oh, the answer is 0.000017. Well, I was actually really close to getting the right answer, but I had negative uh, that one for the first one. I subtracted them and got zero. Oh, because you got to add them. Yeah, I didn't, when I squared it, I, yep. I, I carried out the negative. Oh, yep, for yep. Yeah, if you don't put them in parentheses, not for some reason, I know why. Because if you go to negative three and you square it there, yeah. Todd, it's going to make it negative nine. Because the calculator only squares the three, not the minus sign. So it doesn't know that's really negative 3, and that's the correct answer. When you write negative 3 squared, you're not really squaring the negative 3. When you write negative 3 squared, the machine does that first, so that's a 9, there's the minus. If you want the whole thing squared, you've got to put them in parentheses, and that is a plus 9. That's a question on the SAT exam, by the way. If, yep. Yep, but that's one of, the, one of the trick questions you might see on the SAT exam. The math. So that's this question, RMS value. If I, if I thought of the calculator, I would have just skipped all of this one to the calculator, but I'm glad I did it anyway. So from now on, I said, you know your calc. I'll just jump on the calculator there. I'll set it up. So there was another question you had for me. Which one says? 19 parts A. 19. The first two parts aren't bad. You have to have a nice 19. I've got to find it. 19. Soon enough, I'll find it. <coughs> Calculate the average power supplied to each passive element in the circuit. Determine the power supplied by each source. Replace the 8 ohm resistor. Yeah, that was a talk part. That's the one? Yeah. Replace the 8 ohm resistor with an impedance cable of drone maximum average power from. So here, we need to know what that value is. So here's my circuit. It's already changed to actually, that's a different example. So if you're watching the video, nothing to do with the previous one. Negative 2J. This is a 4.8 ohm. This is an inductor of J1.96. This is a dependent source, current source with a value of 1.6 I sub X. I'll put I sub X in a minute. And now here, they're telling us we're going to replace this with some Z load. And this value is actually adjustable. You can change the value. That line means it's going to change. This is I sub X. The question is, the other way. is it the other way? Define I sub X? Oh, yes, it is going. 
They define i sub x going to the left, not to the right. I just didn't even look at it. I assume it was going that direction. They define it going that way. So what value should we use for ZL? And once we find what that value, we'll calculate the power supplied to it. We'll calculate the power by everything. Supplied by this source, that one, absorbed by these, and see what the value is. So to find ZL first, you need to make sure that ZL equals what? Z thevenin conjugate. It has to be. For maximum power transfer, Z load has to equal the Z thevenin conjugate. The question is, how do we find Z thevenin? Me, since I have independent dependent sources, I go Z thevenin is equal to V open circuit, I like this method, over I short circuit. So I'm going to chop the circuit right here. And find V open circuit and I short circuit. So let me focus on V open circuit. Here's my circuit now. Negative 2J. I don't even like to use resistors and inductors, just use boxes. 4.8 here. One point nine six J one point six I sub X and this is I X here and this is my V open circuit. Let me define a plus on the top, minus on the bottom. If I define a plus on the top, minus on the bottom, then I need to find the current coming down to get Z thevenin. If I define V open circuit plus on the bottom minus on the top, I can do that. Then I need to find the current going that way. So when you divide them, that's equal Z thevenin. It has to be the same direction. Okay. So how do we find V open circuit? Well, you know what? If you want, you can do source transformation right here. Don't you lose I X? Don't you do that or no? You lose I sub X? Yeah. Why? Because they're still flowing this way, right? So that's not really going. All I know right now is my voltage here is V open circuit. Actually, I only have one equation by one unknown, to be honest with you. I don't have to kill myself. Why? If I assign current, what's this current equal to? Negative 2J. Yep, negative 2J. There's only that current. And what's this current equal to? Negative, right? Negative I sub X. I sub X was going this way, this is going that way when I go through it. I sub X was coming this way. If I made it going that way, then this is I sub X. Hmm. Well, now we got a problem here. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Things and stuff. Look at KCL. The current entering the node should equal the current leaving that node. Right? So the 1.6 I sub X has to equal what? Has to equal to I sub X. So the only way that could happen. So now. This one looks like it's not making sense. If you do KCL at the open circuit, it says, wait a minute, the current going in should equal the current leaving. Well, what is going into that node? 1.6 I sub X has to equal the current leaving. What's the current leaving that node? I sub X. Well, do the math. I sub X has to be zero in this example. It has to be. Otherwise, this will never happen. Can't work. So if I sub X is zero, let's continue. What's the voltage now coming down this way? 
What's the voltage right here? Three open circuit minus. Minus what? It's V open circuit. Just V open circuit. Because there's no drop here. I sub X is zero. Zero times anything is what? Zero. zero. So this voltage is actually V open circuit. Where's this current going? Notice there's no current coming in here. You got negative 2J going up. What's going to happen here? That will come down through this one, all of it. So what's the current coming down through this one? It has to be negative 2J. This current. There's no other way. Because this plus 0 should equal the current leaving. So I know what my V open circuit now is going to be negative 2J times 4.8. That's two angle ni negative 90. Is that 9.6? Angle what? Negative 90 degrees? Yes. No, I got positive 90. Well, negative J, right? I, it, negative 9.6J is the same as 9.6. Yeah. Yeah. If you put a negative in the front, is that what you did? You put a negative? Yeah, yeah if you did negative, yes. Because the negative is 180 degrees phase shift plus or minus. So you can write that. So you can write negative 9.6 plus 90 degrees or 9.6 negative 90 degrees, the same thing. So we have the V open circuit. Now I need to find I short circuit. What's this? If you put a short circuit now down, let's see what will happen. So this is what I have, negative 2J, four point eight, 1.96J, one 1.6IX, 1 and now let's put a wire here. And let's see what that wire is. What's that current going through the I-short circuit? And this is 1.6. I mean, a little, little not 1.6. This is what? I sub X. This is zero voltage here. This is my ground. This is zero voltage. Oh, no, we'll have some. Why? It's your voltage, not your current. Yep. So you got KCL of this node. If you do KCL of that node, the current going in, which is this one, equals the current leaving. I can tell you what I short circuit equals. Anyone? Six yep, 0.6 I sub X. Absolutely. No, because you got, take that node. The current going in, 1.6. What's leaving? There's a full one going this way, and you got I short circuit going that way. So if you do KCL at zero up there in the top, it says the current going in, which is 1.6 I sub X, equals the current leaving, that's I sub X, plus I short circuit. What's I short circuit? 0.6 I sub X. This voltage is zero. What's this voltage? 1.96J. Times what? Times I sub, X. I sub X. But wait a minute, is it plus or minus? Notice the way the current's leaving is coming this way. That tells me this is what? Positive. This is negative. So this end should be lower than that. So the voltage here should be what? Negative. 1.96 J times I sub X. That's what the voltage should be right here. Everyone see that? It's lower. We also know that voltage here. Let's see. I can write your KCL here. It might be easier. You know, instead of doing it this way, 
voltages. We could assign KCR. I can say, well, this is I sub X going this way. We assign this current this way. Doesn't matter which direction you assign them, because those equations are a little bit easier. Mesh analysis is a little bit easier than using nodal analysis. You're not dividing, so the math is a little bit easier. So we have three. Well, nothing's going to go through that. We know that's I short circuit, right? So if you want to do this current here, I changed direction intentionally on you there, but it won't make a difference. We know what this current is. What's that current? Well, plus will be plus because I changed the direction, right? I decided to make it counterclockwise instead of clockwise. There's only one equation we can do for KVL here. You can't do one here. Why? That's a current source. We can't do one here. Why? Current source. I can't do one here. Why? Current source. There's only one loop. The outside. Not the out outside, but let me get my highlighter here. Let's see if I can highlight it. I can do one loop here, and you can go in any direction you want to. I can travel this way. Can you see it on the screen? A little bit yellowish? Yep. Which way you want to go? You want to go counterclockwise with it? Sure. So I'm traveling this way, counterclockwise. Shh. So obviously, that's why I didn't really care what I defined I short circuit up or down. It doesn't make a difference because there's nothing here. So there's a voltage drop of zero here. This will be what? 1.96J times I sub X plus... 4.8 times the current down. Okay, what is the current down? I'm looking for the current down. I sub X minus 2J. I sub X minus the 2J. How many unknowns do you see there? Only one, right? So 4.8 plus 1.96, can combine them together. equals 2 times 4.8, that's 9.6J. When you move it to that side, can I solve for I sub X? Where do we go? Get out of this. Parentheses. 9.6J, uh, or I in my calculator, divided by parentheses. 4.8 plus... 1.96J. According to my calculator, I sub X is 1.85159 angle 67.7882. What's I short circuit now? 0 0.6, 0.6 times I sub X multiplied by 0 0.6. It is, I'll just round it up, 1.11 angle, what is that, 68 degrees roughly? So now I have V open circuit and I have I short circuit. Can I find Z thevenin? Which is V open circuit over I short circuit. I have V open circuit, I just did that, which is 9.6 angle negative 90. over 1.11 angle 68 or 9.6 angle negative 90 divided by 1.11 angle 68 and I, I came up with 8.65 angle what? Negative 158. Now if you want to change this to rectangular coordinates, multiply it by the cosine and the j sine. 
or just change the calculator mode to rectangular, we'll give you that answer. Yep. Yep. So Z load equals Z feminine conjugate, which is 8.65 angle what? Positive 158. So if you want to know what to put there, what load to put there? Like is it a capacitor? Is it an inductor? What is it? Is it a resistor with an inductor? Well, you can find what actually that is because that's 8.65 times, I forgot to check what mode I'm in. Am I in degree mode? Yes, escape. Times the cosine of 158. That's the value of the resistor. It's negative eight. And the J value, 8.65, sine of 158. And that's 3.24 or 3.2J. Oh, don't worry. You'll get that. How you'll did you get negative 8? Cosine sine. 8.65 cosine 158 plus J 8.65 sine of 158. You'll cover all these, don't worry, negative values coming up. Is that negative value like a capacitor and inductor returning current? That's, an in, that's actually an inductor here. This is something else. Mm. Yep. Gotta leave, leave something for you to... The mystery. Yep, and you'll get that, don't worry. I'm gonna go ahead and just watch your videos tonight. <laughs> actually, all you gotta do is just Google it, or if you have that... Uh, the new gadget people have, not Siri, you put on the table and say, what is the temperature? And it gives you that information. What is that called? Alexa. Alexa, yeah. Alexa what, is, what is a negative resistor means? Ask Alexa, see if she knows that. Is it a transistor? Can't tell you. You gotta look, you gotta re research it. First one to answer that one, research it. I'll let you buy me a coffee. <laughs> That's your reward. Now, we need to calculate what the average power delivered to each one, right? Is that what they're asking? No, it just said to find the thing. No, just to find it? The first part was. Yeah, so that's the second part? Okay. So that's really what um, Z load should be, is 8.65 angle 158 degrees. Or if you don't like that, you can say negative 8.65 angle what? Negative like 32 degrees, whatever, to add up to 180 or 22. Any other questions before I shut the video? Nothing on this? So I'll post this on the web as examples of um, RMS value and ZL, maximum power transfer. If you want to find the maximum power once you have these numbers, because your values are, are these RMS values, do they say RMS value? This or no? It doesn't really say RMS value, right? Where's the question? Calculate the average power supplied. No, it doesn't say RMS value. So now if you want to actually calculate it, I'll just carry on with it just quickly here. Now, if you want to solve it, you got to go back and redo the whole problem again. Because now your load here is what? Oh, I will give you that. Oh, that would be me giving you that. You can't because that's before we didn't have that one. And so now you're going to put that resistor there. So it's going to be what, 8.65, angle 158 degrees. So you're serving a little bit different now, Todd. Before we did the calculation, this was either open, that wasn't here, or it was a wire. 
Now you're putting something else in it. That's going to change everything. But I thought we could rewrite that whole circuit as a Thevenin circuit. Oh, you could. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we could. Since we know what I didn't cal we did calculate V Thevenin, that's right. So I could actually use, I see what you're asking now. Tad said, since you know what the equivalent of this, why even go back to this? And he's absolutely right. Why go back to this? Why not put the Thevenin equivalent of that since we know that? And that makes the problem a bit smaller. So if you do that, what's V7 in here? The, uh, the open circuit, because Which is what? 9.6 angle negative 90. 9.6 angle negative 90 degrees. And Z7 in here. The reason I was going back to this, because I wasn't trying to figure out how much power was delivered to the load. I was trying to calculate every one of these. Oh. So if I just wanted the load, I'll just go to this. Maybe I'll just stop with the load and go, that's enough. Why kill myself? I know that this will have zero average power, right? This, I gotta find the voltage across. So if you're trying to find the voltage, and you're trying to find the power absorber supplied by each one of these, then you need to know the voltage and the current through each one of them. If you're only looking for the load there, just the load, then that's a different story. That would make it a little bit easier. Negative was 158, Z Thevenin, right? So if I'm looking for the load there, I go, that's easy. And maybe I just stick with the load. If you do a source of transformation, does it change the amount of like, you know, your average power going like to a resistor or no? It shouldn't. Like at the top of you have the negative 2J with the four frame. If you change nope, that. Nope, shouldn't. You'll still have the same nope. average power. That, that will not affect this one. Not for that one, but I mean for the 4.8, say would it change, you know, when they find ask you to find it for like each component? Like can you do that and it's fine? If you do source transformation, this becomes a voltage source in series with that resistor. Yeah. The average power here is still going to be, still going to be the same. Because okay. yeah. that's an equivalent circuit, so it shouldn't really change any of that stuff there. Okay. So now I can find what the current going through that. If I define the current going there, the imaginary values will disappear here. So this will be what? Remember, I did this actually the rectangular value. I cheated there. Well, not cheated, just to show you. We said this is what? Negative 8 plus J what? 3.2. That means this is what? Negative 8 minus J 3.2. Right? So if I want to find that current I going through the whole thing, it's going to be the source, which is 9.6 over what? Negative 90 divided by the sum of these two, and that will make it what? negative 16. Divided by negative 16. And it's 0 0.6 angle 90 on the money. And what's the voltage right here if you want to find the voltage across the load here, VL? Isn't half of the no? Oh, you mean half of this number? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that another. How about you take this number, this impedance times that one. So it's I times what? 8.65 angle 158. So we have I times 8.65 angle 158. And this is 5.19 angle negative 112. Chris said, isn't it half of this number? Now let me ask, is this number half of this? No. no. So now you know the voltage across the load, you know the current through the load, what is the average power? Remember the equation for average power? Isn't it 51.9, not 5.9? It should be 5.1, you only have 5.6, right? Oh yeah. It, yeah, point 0.6, yep. Six. That's it, yeah, point 0.6. So P average, equals what? One half has to be a half because that's not our mass value. V max, 
I max cosine theta V minus theta I. So here we go, one half V max, what's V max? 5.19 with no angle. We're looking at the peak value. I sub max is the 0.6 cosine theta V minus theta I. What's theta V? Negative 112 minus what's theta I? Negative 90 degrees. Point 0.5 times 5.19 times 0 0.6 times cosine negative 112 minus 90 close parentheses it says uh oh we got zero I didn't get, I didn't get zero no what'd you get uh, 1.44 oh I know I did instead of 0 0.6 I made it 0 minus 6 what'd you get there Negative 1.44 watts. Ah, negative. 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 That negative 8 is uh, something crazy. That means that's doing what? Supplying power. It's supplying power. How can a resistor supply power? I'll give you a little hint. That negative eight is not a resistor. Amplifier? Maybe. Like a Something is supplying power there. So, but you know now it's not really a resistor, so we narrow it down. <laughs> it's not. It's not, because people said, what's the negative eight? Like, how can it be a resistor negative? So when you see a negative value for a resistor, it's not really a resistor, it's something else. It's not a capacitor or inductor either? Capacitor and inductors don't supply or absorb any power. Right? So we narrow it down. Another check here, Todd. It's not a resistor, it's not a capacitor, it's not an inductor. Diode? I don't know. Maybe something, another hint will come in and help us down the road. What's the power factor, by the way? Hmm? Nobody? Of yep. Control. Nobody Googled that yet? I, I thought you guys would Google it. I got a bunch of things. I got diodes, transistors, yep. Options, yep. Could be a lot of things. That could be a diet, could be a transistor, which we don't cover anymore. We used to cover them in the second course of digital logic, but UMass dropped out on us. They see you don't have to cover it, they'll cover it in the third year. So it could be something else that we don't cover here. So what's the cosine of negative 112 minus 90? Now, when you look at that angle, is that negative angle or positive angle? Negative 112 minus 90. That's a negative angle. Negative. If it's negative, it's leading power factor. Remember, it's positive, it's lagging. So what's the cosine of that? It's negative 0.927. Again, that power factor negative. Ah, it doesn't make any sense here. Because a lot of the stuff we're dealing with here, it's not really what we normally deal with. It's not a resistor, it's not a capacitor, it's not an inductor. We're dealing with something we did not discuss in this class, we will not discuss in this class. Well, it could be a, like an op amp is one of the options. We discuss op amp, but that's it. But we never, we never discuss diodes or zener diodes or PNP transistor and PN transistors. So that's why some of the stuff doesn't look like it's making sense, negative resistor. No, it's not. The power, actually, I'm glad I calculated the power to let you know. That, that thing is supplying power. So if you thought it's a resistor, it can't be supplying power. So if we get a negative value, something Just leave it. Wrong. No, just leave it oh. for now. Because just the way the problem is stated, the values we put in, that's where you're getting. But you just leave it. It's negative 8. You know, that's what the math is telling you. But right now, really, in this class, where we are at this level, we don't know why. Because we didn't cover that yet. That will come later. You know, not in our class. You know. Maybe like electronics one.